Hey there, my name is David, and today we're going to talk about the past, present, and future of Notion AI. Thanks so much for tuning in today. A little bit about me. My name is David. I joined Notion back in 2018. We were a 10-person company operating from a little garage in San Francisco, but today I work on the product marketing team at Notion focused on our AI efforts. I've always said that product marketing feels like one of the most fun jobs that you could have at Notion because we do have this really passionate community of users who are always giving us suggestions about how the product could be better or what changes they would like to see in Notion. And I get to be the person that shows up on launch day and says, here's this new feature that you've been waiting for, or here's something that's really going to change the way that you use Notion. It always felt like being kind of like the Santa Claus of Notion. So what are you going to learn in this webinar today? Back in February of this year, we shipped a generally available AI product before a lot of our competitors, which was Notion AI. Uh, that meant that we skipped a lot of steps, so we cut some corners, and there was a few learnings along the way. So if you're building your own AI product, um, there's probably something that you can learn from this webinar about some of the things that we took away from that launch. I'm also going to show you a live demo of our newest AI feature, which is AI autofill in Notion databases, and explore some potential use cases. And then given sort of the successes and learnings from our AI launches this year, I want to share some predictions about where AI is headed next. So first and foremost, what is Notion? Notion is always best articulated as its core use cases, which is wiki, docs, and projects all in one place. And uh, the initial launch of Notion AI earlier this year was very much focused, focused on this uh, document use case, plugging AI into your documents to be able to generate text on your behalf or edit text on your behalf, whether it's in your meeting notes or blog posts, etc. But of course, there's lots more opportunities to plug in AI into our other use cases as well, which we'll get into in a bit. But what is Notion AI? I want to start by talking about October of 2022. This is about a month before ChatGPT had its big launch moment and AI really started to really capture the public imagination in a huge way that we hadn't seen before. In October, every single Notion employee was all busy at a company offsite. Uh, we were busy with company planning. And our two co-founders took advantage of this opportunity when everyone was busy and occupying themselves and they started hacking away at something new. So when we all came back from this company offsite, we arrived on Monday morning with a mysterious message in our Notion Slack uh, workspace. Uh, and it was this video posted by the two co-founders um, that they had hacked together, plugging an AI into Notion and immediately started to think about what are all the possibilities of what this can mean. And they assembled a team that worked really, really quickly and one month later, by November 2022, uh, we had built this invite-only uh, private alpha for Notion AI. Uh, there was a wait list. You could sign up to get access. And we started giving access to users uh, slowly but steadily so that they could start testing out what it would be like to use generative AI in Notion. And then a few months later, in February of 2023, is when we really opened the floodgates and we made Notion AI generally available to our tens of millions of users. No wait list, no limited preview. Now, many of our competitors at this time had made AI announcements, but it was a little unusual for a company of our size to have a generally available solution that anyone could go and test out right away. Now, there were some trade-offs with the shipping speed, um, which we'll get into in a little bit. Now, here's what Notion AI looks like. Um, you'll see that when I start a new line in Notion, we see this command press space for AI, and that brings up a whole menu of options here, uh, whether I want to summarize the contents of this page, if I want to improve my writing, fix my spelling and grammar, or choose from a number of prompts here, you know, like blog post or, you know, write me an essay about something. So just to give you a little sneak peek of what this looks like, now AI is looking through all the contents of this page and has generated this summary really, really quickly. But one of the questions that we get really frequently about Notion AI is, how is this different from ChatGPT? And it's a valid question. And uh, I want to share uh, a strange analogy, which is to the digital camera. 
Now, I imagine that many folks who are watching this webinar at some point in their lives have owned a digital camera. Now, how did we quantify the value of owning a digital camera? It would be in the number of photos that you took with the camera. But before we all had a smartphone in our pocket, we would use this camera separate from our other devices. But I'd be willing to bet that now that you have a smartphone with a built-in camera always on your person, uh, that you're taking more photos today now that it's built into the device that you're already using all the time versus the number of photos that you used to take when it was a separate device, this digital camera that was separate from your phone. And this is exactly what makes Notion AI different, is that it's an assistant for your work in the same place where you do the work. Now, a really simple example of this would be for summarizing meeting notes. Now, ChatGPT is great at summarizing meeting notes. However, in order to do that, you would need to be taking your meeting notes, whether it's in Notion or Google Docs, what have you. You can copy those meeting notes, go over to ChatGPT in a different browser tab, paste the meeting notes, and then enter your prompt to ask for a summary. You get the summary, you copy those meeting notes, you go back to your Google Doc or Notion or wherever you have your meeting notes, and then you paste your summary. That's a lot of steps just to get a summary of meeting notes. Versus in Notion, you just pull up AI right inside the meeting note, right in the place where you're already working, and click the Summarize button. So just like a digital camera versus a camera that's built into your phone, you're going to use it more often because it's built into the place where you're already spending so much of your time and therefore get more value out of having access to something as powerful as generative AI. So this presentation is called the past, present, and future of Notion AI. And I wanted to start with some launch learnings. We talked about how Notion shipped this generally available generative AI solution to all of our users um, before a lot of our competitors made their solution generally available. And now that shipping speed came with a number of learnings uh, because of how quickly uh, we introduced the solution to market. Now, one of the assumptions that we made in the initial launch, um, you could see in our original marketing materials. Now, we thought, you know, there's so many possibilities of what people can use generative AI for. People can use it to generate a blog post, generate a sales email. And uh, when you look at our original landing page, you can see that we weren't very imaginative about the use cases here. You can write a cute haiku about robots, burritos, or your quarterly OKRs. And in the initial alpha version of Notion AI, every single time that you created a new page in Notion, which is a screen that our users look at really frequently, we had this really noisy prompt that put all of these different ideas in front of you. Every single time you create a new Notion page, do you want to create a blog post with AI? Do you want to create a social media post with AI? We sort of assumed that people would use this purely generative use case similar to ChatGPT. What we were really missing as part of this launch is that people really want for AI to be an editor of their content, not always an author of their content. Now, the big learning from this launch we assumed that most people would use those prompts on the new page screen that I just showed you, or that they would enter their custom prompt here. We were really, really surprised at how frequently users interacted with AI from this button here in the formatting toolbar. Now this actually has a really important learning here, which is that people prefer to write the content themselves. I'm the human, I'm in the driver's seat, I have all the context about what I need to write, I would prefer to write the first draft myself, but then I do know the quality bar can be a little higher. Maybe I wrote something that's too long and it needs to be more concise. Perhaps I want to change the tone to be more confident. We were really surprised at how frequently people prefer to write their own content first and then lean on AI as an editor and not an author. So that's the first learning. The second is that people really needed extremely specific and actionable use cases for this brand new technology that they hadn't interacted with before. We got so overwhelmed at thinking about all of the possibilities of what you could use AI for that I developed what I thought was a really clever marketing framework of work faster, write better, think bigger. Because there's so many different things that you could do with AI, I wanted to sort of categorize them into these three uh, sort of key value props of Notion AI. 
You can work faster by generating a summary of content. You can write better by calling up AI from your formatting toolbar and asking it to make your writing more confident. You can think bigger by treating AI as a brainstorming partner. I was just thinking about all the different use cases. However, what we learned is that this was not nearly specific or actionable enough for people. What we really needed was really specific prompts that people could copy paste, really specific use cases. And the number one feedback that we heard after this launch is, wait, what is this thing? What do I use it for? It's like customers wanted sort of a Lego set. They wanted to see what's the end product that I'm going to achieve. What are all of the specific possibilities of what I could build? And instead, what we shipped was sort of a, a bucket of loose Lego bricks and left it up to the user to figure out um, how they wanted to interact with AI. So if I had the ability to do this launch all over again, rather than having this really high level marketing framework of work faster, write better, think bigger, I would have focused on more specific and actionable use cases, even perhaps giving copy pasteable AI prompts um, to users in the marketing materials. The learning number three from the initial launch of Notion AI in February of this year is that security and privacy is really important. And uh, there was a really important decision that we made when we were developing Notion AI, and it wound up getting buried in our terms of service, which is that we won't use any customer data to train any AI models. It turns out this is actually really important both to consumers and businesses. But unless you were reading through the fine print in our terms of service, you probably wouldn't have realized that Notion made this decision. So in hindsight, we really should have elevated this commitment to privacy and security in our marketing materials. And now we're sort of playing catch up. So that summarizes some of the learnings from our launch of Notion AI back in February of this year. But I do want to call out that one of the most important limitations of that initial launch is that AI only worked on one page at a time. But when you talk to someone who's been using Notion for a long time, they will always tell you that the most special part of Notion when they really had their light bulb moment about Notion's customizability and Notion's power is in its database feature. And so we thought that the next logical step for Notion AI would be not only using AI on one document at a time, but what if you could use AI across dozens or even hundreds of pages all at the same time using Notion databases? And so here we have an example of a database that a product manager might be really familiar with, which is a launch roadmap. Now, each one of the pages in this roadmap here contains so much detail about each one of these items on the roadmap. Now, the product manager who wrote this content is probably pretty comfortable reading through all of this. But imagine if you're a cross-functional partner and you're coming to this launch roadmap and you're really just wondering, what are we shipping next? What's on the roadmap? Are we going to ship the feature that my customer is asking about in the support ticket or what have you? And it's going to take a long time to read through all of that content. And so we can leverage AI to provide a summary for us of all of the content inside each one of these pages. So we're going to call up this AI summary autofill property. And in just a few seconds, we see how quickly Generative AI was able to search through all of the content inside each one of those pages and just give us the TLDR. Now we have this really quick summary so that any cross-functional partner can come here and learn about what is each one of these features. But in my opinion, I think these summaries could be a little bit more readable, a little bit more scannable. They're a little verbose. They're a little long. And so we have the ability not only to do a really quick one-click summary or extract the key info or do a translation, we can actually input any custom prompt that we want. And so what I actually want to see here is explain this feature to me like I'm a beginner in three bullet points, no more than 15 words per bullet. And now, we see that this is able to take all of that content again, produce the summary in this more readable format. And uh, I know that many of our customers, I know that certainly I have colleagues across the world. There's a lot of distributed teams. 
I have colleagues in our Japan office and our Korea office. And, uh, you know, it would be great to produce a summary of this content in non-English languages. And so we can even ask it in the custom prompt here for the same explain this feature to me, but output in Japanese. And you can imagine how useful this would be to cross-functional partners and other offices across the globe who are able to come to this database, learn about what's on the product roadmap and get the really, really, really quick summary of what's coming up next in their own language. So really powerful features available in AI Autofill, now giving you the ability to leverage the time-saving efficiencies of generative AI, not just on one document at a time, but across hundreds of documents at a time. So that's AI Autofill. But where are we headed next? I wanted to share a few sort of predictions based on what we've learned and a lot of the opportunities that came out of those previous launches and uh, take a few guesses as to where we're headed from here. And first, I really want to ask this question of who actually gets value out of AI? I think for the past year, we've heard lots of lofty promises from lots of software companies about how AI is going to completely transform your day-to-day -day work. And uh, I think that's true of some people. I think it's true certainly of AI enthusiasts and people who have really mastered the art of prompting the AI and understanding where it fits into their workflow. But I don't really believe that AI, uh, certainly generative AI, has been completely transformational to the average Joe's day-to-day -day work. Now, today, it sort of feels like a stuffy concierge desk at a hotel. Now, if you've ever stayed at a hotel with a concierge desk, you know that there's so much that they can do for you. They can plan a birthday party for you. They can recommend local experiences. They can even set up a, you know, a whole local experience for you and your family. There's so many different services that they can offer, restaurant reservations, etc. But I don't think anybody, I, I certainly have not approached one of these stuffy looking concierge desks even though this value is included with the cost of your hotel stay, even though there's so much that they can do for you, at the end of the day, you have to walk up to the desk and you have to express intent. You have to ask for help. And I don't think this describes the average person's experience with AI today. I don't think the average person is going about their day-to-day -day work and is constantly pulling up ChatGPT or Notion AI or any other generative AI tool and feeding it specific prompts about how it can speed up their workflow. And I think the thing that will make the biggest difference here is, again, this idea of intent. In the future, I believe that AI will be more helpful when it becomes passive, ambient, and anticipatory as long as we're keeping the human in the loop, not making any decisions on behalf of the human, always asking the human to approve or reject any changes that may be made, more like a concierge who actually leaves their desk, goes to any hotel guest, and anticipates their needs before they have them. I think there's a huge opportunity here for AI to become more passive, more ambient, and start to anticipate users' needs before they have them. Next, I really want to see over the next year sort of a transition from AI feeling just like another software tool to more of a teammate that actually understands how the business operates. A lot of software tools today feel like sort of a generic, out-of-the-box, large language model. But And this is even true of Notion AI today. If I ask Notion AI to recommend Q4 OKRs for my team based on Q3 performance, it's not going to give me a very good output because it doesn't have all of the context of how the business operates. This is also true of any other generative AI tool like ChatGPT or a standard Google search. Google has been using AI for years, but the next huge opportunity here is for an AI that does understand the context of your business, how a business operates, all the previous decisions that have been made, every task that's ever been assigned to an engineer so that it can actually become more of a helpful thought partner and you can lean on it for advice throughout your workday rather than just as a brainstorming partner or um, a tool that improves your, your documents and how they're written. And I wanna to end today with a few thoughts on what is the real job to be done for AI. Now at Notion, we've always been really interested in the origins and the history of computing. And I think we can all imagine how scary it must have been back in the 60s, back in the 70s, when computers were this brand new thing 
And I imagine there must have been a lot of people thinking back in the 60s and in the 70s, are computers going to replace us? Now, one of the computing pioneers we talk about the most frequently at Notion is Douglas Engelbart. And uh, he, his most important paper was not about replacing human intellect. Rather, his paper, his most important paper was titled Augmenting Human Intellect. And I think this will be true for AI as well. We certainly believe this at Notion, that the role of AI is not to replace, but to augment human capabilities. What if AI was able to take over all of the you know, really menial tasks, the work about work that prevents you from being able to really focus on what you're best at, the thing that you were hired for. So if we get to a point where we can truly delegate all of our tedium to an AI that's able to handle those things on our behalf, it really allows us to rise to our full potential, augment our own intellect, be more creative, and do the best work that we were hired for in the first place. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for tuning in today.